It's the world. I'm in PE world. So Kenny Pickett looks pretty good. Gotta check out this video right here, man. You feel me? By the homie um, Brett Coleman. You feel me? Uh, they say Wody don't really endorse a lot of players. So to see Kenny Pickett up here on the list is very good, man. We've been reacting to every single Stiller game this season, and I'm very impressed by the youngin'. Um, I know they make jokes about his hands and shit like that, but he's really that boy. The only thing that I personally don't like about Kenny Pickett is his drip, his swag. Uh, it's not a fan of the double glove, uh, half sleeve uh, coach. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. You know what I mean? But I'm feeling it at the same time, bro. And that number eight remind me of Tommy Maddox too. But um, the boy's looking fucking great, man. Let's let's check it's this out. It's finally time to talk about Kenny Pickett. Yes, it and is. I wish I could say that this is a breakdown of the good, the bad, and the ugly so far this preseason. But quite frankly, there hasn't been a whole lot of bad to speak of. Yes, sir. And there definitely hasn't been any ugly either. Yes, so sir. I guess that just leaves the good. Let's get to it. First things first, I don't want to hear anyone say that Pickett's production so far this preseason doesn't count or is somehow lesser right. because his average depth of target is an extremely short 5.4 yards. It's very easy to label someone a dink and dunk artist, but I don't really think that that's fair to Pickett right now. No. You can only execute the plays that are called, after all. And quite frankly, in the first week of the preseason... See, that's my thing. He just made a big point like... A, a person will say, like, oh, this quarterback, duh, 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 he throws fucking check downs all day. But, like, motherfucker, the quarterback's not calling the plays, bro. You feel what I'm saying? The Steelers staff definitely treated him with kid gloves. There were a lot of RPOs. He said kid stick gloves. concepts and slants and little bootlegs or sprint outs where he's just working the flats. And even though his only true target down the field was still a great throw, his receiver just couldn't make the back shoulder adjustment to it, so it went down as an incompletion anyway. I do acknowledge that there definitely were not a lot of attempts at quote-unquote low percentage balls in that week, and yet the fact that the Steelers' offense was so conservative, again, in a rookie's first ever game, that doesn't really bother me that much. I kind of expected them to be conservative. Pickett just executed the offense, and to his credit, he did it well. The ball got moved, the passing game was mostly efficient, and what do you know, he did nice. lead two scoring drives in the second half, including the game-winning drive itself. Did he make any crazy, stupid, ridiculous throws that only an alien can do, like Trevor Lawrence did against the Steelers? The very he looks so week? relaxed. Well, no, but then again, I don't expect him to do that either because he doesn't have Trevor Lawrence's arm. What I expect Kenny Pickett to do is be accurate, be efficient, be hard to sack because of his mobility, and above all, I expect him to get the ball out quickly. Mm, and all of those qualities block. are exactly what we got. What I did not expect, however, was for Pickett to already be so in tune with the Steelers receiving core in terms of throwing side adjusts against certain coverages, and of course for him to be so poised in the face of pressure in just his first couple of games. He does not look panicked mm. like many rookies do in their first live game action, and I want to demonstrate just how important that decisiveness Beautiful. and confidence can be by looking at his two-minute drill to end the first half against Jacksonville. There were technically only five throws in that drive to march all the way down the field in 40 seconds and put up a touchdown, but those five throws showed me mostly all I needed to see when it comes to how ready Kenny Pickett is to play. Before I break down everything that he did, though, I want to thank Harry's for making today's show possible. Go ahead and uh, get beyond this. Very long ad, very long ad. All right, let's break down this drive play by play. This is first and 10 from the Steelers' own 30 Get that money, though, brother. start off the drive with roughly a minute left in the half. The Jaguars are presenting two high safeties here, so considering the down distance and situation, it's probably either quarters coverage or something like Tampa 2, but Pickett will be reading these safeties to see if there's any rotation down into a cover 3 look. Now, the play that the Steelers are running here is colloquially known as Stick Dragon. There's a stick side with two stick routes and a clear out down the boundary, and there's a dragon side. And for those that... Bro, I swear the football is like a game of chess. It's crazy because, like, recently since um, Madden 23 came out, I've been diving back into, like, videos on YouTube just learning, like, how to read defense, how to, um, you know, uh, match up on um, offense, with you know, depending on what personnel is coming out. And, like, this is really a game of chess, bro. Like... It's there's like every time you think you know something about the game of football, like 
it gets even deeper and deeper, bro. Like, this shit is really crazy. Don't know, dragon is a West Coast term for a route combination of a slant and flat route together, so this concept is just called stick dragon. Typically, when you have this kind of call, there's a man side and a zone side in terms of how the quarterback reads it. Meaning, if you see something like spot drop cover two zone, you're gonna work the stick routes that settle in between those zones, but if you get a straight up man coverage look, or even a match zone coverage look like quarters that ends up playing like man coverage anyway, then you work the dragon side of the concept because this slant flat combo is much better at breaking man. I did learn that quarters play like man. I just definitely learned that. In this place case, the Jags are in a variation of match quarters, so Pickett knows that he's got to work this dragon concept. That was a bad snap the too. The read is relatively simple here. You work your eyes from the safety to make sure that he's not flying downhill to be a hook zone player in a rotation to cover three. And then if there is no rotation, you work to this linebacker after that to see if he's staying in this hook zone or if he's hauling ass out to the flat to match this running back. And if that backer is matching to the flat, that is then gonna open up this window to be wide open for the slant to cut in behind him. On the end zone angle, you can even see Pickett's eyes work from the safety to the linebacker as he's reading this progression. And then he just leads Deontay Johnson into the void. That's cover. crazy. It was an easy pitch and catch on a perfect read. And in one play, it got the Steelers all the way past midfield with still more than 50 seconds to go. That brings us then to the next play, first and 10 from the 45. The Steelers run stick seam to the field and Pickett wastes no time in just hitting Pat Fryermuth on the short stick route against Tampa 2 zone coverage. Again, when you're getting this kind of soft zone in this situation, you just want to throw that stick route and keep the ball moving because that's another 10 yards and another first down. And now the Steelers are all the way down to the 35 could've, yard could've line, left, still too. with 41 seconds left. That is a lot of time remaining. And after a quick spike to stop the clock, that's bringing up a second and 10 where the Jags are a little bit nervous now. So they're going to get more aggressive to try to keep Pittsburgh out of the red zone here. So they dial up a 3-3 fire zone pressure, meaning three under, three deep, with both the star and the Mike linebacker bringing heat. The Steelers, meanwhile, are in a six-man pass protection called two jet, so theoretically they should have enough bodies to handle this pressure. And as far as route concepts go, the Steelers are running wide choice out of a tight bunch set, and the primary read on the play, naturally, is going to be the choice route from the wide tight end, Pat Fryermuth. Eight times out of 10, the ball is going to Fryermuth here because his one job is to just read the leverage of the defenders and either break out on another stick route if he reads hook zone droppers sitting inside of him, or if the defender is turning their hips out towards him to match him, this he'll is just crazy. work back across their eye line to the middle of the field on a delayed seam route. And while Frymuth is reading that coverage to determine which route he runs, Pickett is also reading it too. You can see Pickett's eyes locked on Frymuth because he's waiting for him to break the space. And of course, he too can see that the fire zone pressure is coming, as well as the fact that the other linebacker, Foye Aluakun, is fully opened up and running out to Frymuth to match him. And again, with Aluakun's hips turned all the way outside, Pickett knows that if he can just hang in there in the pocket with a rusher barreling down on him, he can drop a dime behind Aluakun. Which is what he did. That That's exactly what he did. Fryermuth is breaking to. 24 yards and one big hit in the pocket later, Pickett now has the Steelers all the way down to the Jags 11-yard line after taking only 37 seconds off the clock. All of that then brings us here to play number four. A little bit of a caveat. That looked like this that looked like that was offside. Count because of offsetting penalties, but I still wanted to include it anyway because I think it's a great example of Pickett's chemistry and trust that he's already built with this Steelers receiving core. Pittsburgh is in an empty set here, and they're running mirrored rail seam route combinations to either side of the field. With just one safety deep in the post in this cover one rat look on defense. The side that Pickett is going to work here is actually pretty easy to determine because he's just going to throw to whatever side the safety does not lean to, which in this case is going to be the weak side of the offensive formation that only has two receiving threats. What I do find great about this play is that, again, it shows that Kenny Pickett already has a ton of trust and chemistry with his guys, especially Deontay Johnson. Not Pickett only that, he knows how to that read the defense. This is likely cover one rat, meaning man coverage across the board with one rat player in a low zone over the middle. And because he knows that it's cover one, especially in the red zone, he also knows that the Jaguars boundary corner on the weak side is going to have absolutely no help in any way. It's crazy. He is truly on an island. So as a result of being on that island, 
DB Technique 101 dictates that the corner will be it coached to offset. not lose inside on the or release. False, I mean, no yeah, matter what. He is going to be completely walling any release inside and forcing Johnson to work an outside release instead so that the corner can use the sideline to his advantage. And that makes it somewhat difficult to run a seam route that eventually has to end up stemming inside into the seam area anyway. If Pickett were a quarterback that did not have chemistry or trust with his guys, it would be easy for him to just write off Johnson completely just based on this pre-snap look and just try to thread the needle to Pickens instead on his own inside seam route, which may or may not get Pickens completely obliterated by the safety. But for Pickett, who somehow does have chemistry already with Johnson, he trusts Johnson to still get to that spot on time, even against a corner that is dead set on not letting him inside. The safest thing that Pickett can do, both in terms of taking care of the ball and in terms of protecting his receivers from a bone-shattering hit from the safety, is to slightly drift in the pocket just to get that post safety to lean away from Johnson a little bit, which he does, and then he can grip it and rip it to the seam and kind of throw it high into the back of the end zone. But again, that requires trust that Deontay is going to win. It requires knowing that he's not going to play any games with the corner and instead he's going to speed release outside, conceding the inside to that DB, and then he can stack the corner vertically to try to get him back into look the how much, mode. Bro, and then he can look how much separation he got just in that little like three seconds. Conceding like conceding the inside to that. He DB, wasn't. It wasn't he, too crazy right here, but like right here he just stacked the corner burst, vertically bro. to try to get uh, him back uh, in uh, panic mode. And then crazy. he can stem the route back over the top and inside. To yeah, Deontay Johnson might be, to be something crazy. This too was a effect. great ball by Pickett to still leave it high where Johnson could adjust to it. But again, the thing that I love most about it was that he had faith in Johnson to even get to that spot in the first place, despite the pre-snap coverage look being about as unfavorable as it could possibly get. To me, that shows confidence and poise well beyond his years, and I think he would have no problem hitting the ground running with this very talented group of receivers. Now, as I said before, this touchdown unfortunately did not count because of offsetting penalties by the edge rusher and the left tackle, so the Steelers had to replay the down. But in my opinion, that just proved to be an opportunity for Pickett to then throw two touchdown passes on two consecutive plays. The Steelers used a short return motion here from George Pickens to once again try to confirm man coverage before the ball is snapped, which did work and the Jags did seemingly present cover one again here for the second play in a row. And with cover one trying to match up with this mesh concept from the Steelers offense here, this is a very unfavorable look for Jacksonville and Pickett knows that his best matchup on the field, or rather his safest matchup on the field, is likely going to be this running back releasing to the flat and forcing the linebacker to fight through a whole bunch of traffic just to keep up. He takes a quick three-step drop and right on that third step wastes no time getting the ball out in rhythm in order to set up the back for a catch and run to the pylon, which does score. Damn, so that's on 54. The read was good, the post-snap read was fast, and the throw is accurate. To me, that's all anyone could ever hope for in this situation out of a rookie quarterback. Just two plays, two great reads. Oh, now that might be on 48, Like though. I said, very few of Pickett's throws in the last couple of games could ever be considered flashy or even freakish like some of the other young quarterbacks. It seemed like he told him to... Like, I'm just trying to see. It seemed like 54 told 48. To me, that's like, all anyone could ever hope for in this situation out of a rookie quarterback. Just two plays... Two he great get there. and two touchdowns. Like I said, very few of Pickett's throws in the last couple of games could ever be considered flashy or even freakish like some of the other young quarterbacks in the league. But even though he doesn't have that level of physical talent, he is still very decisive, he's efficient, he's poised under pressure, and maybe, most importantly of all, he already clearly has the trust of his receivers. I truly do not know what the future holds for Kenny Pickett, and I don't know how good he's going to be or if he's going to make the Steelers contenders again, let alone this year. But what I do know is that just based on what we've seen him do so far this preseason, I don't think he's going to be on the bench for long. He will start this season. I think he's shown way too much promise to not eventually start at some point. The only question, obviously, we have is how many weeks is it going to take for him to, at long last, get that chance? Man, I love this video, man. This was a really, 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 really good video, man. Great breakdown. And I also learned some shit at the same time, bro. Like, I'm really rooting for the boy Kenny Pickett, bro. Like, I'm glad he's getting his clout, you know what I'm saying, and uh, drip that he deserved. But, you know, just hopefully he live up to the expectations of what 
everybody is expecting from him. You feel what I'm saying? Holla at me in the comments. What y'all think about the boy Kenny Pickett, man? Until next time, it's the world.